How's it going guys? Kyle and Paul here with Newegg TV. Today we will be doing our storage server build. That's right Kyle, we've been putting off this project for far too long, uh, but today we're going to be assembling it. Now at Newegg TV we shoot lots of video, we have lots of raw footage and it takes up a lot of space, so we needed a high capacity, high speed storage server solution to allow us to collect all of our uh, video footage in one place, have it backed up, uh, so we're going to do a RAID 5 configuration. And uh, we also wanted something that was speedy enough that um, as we upgrade this in the future, uh, we're potentially going to be moving towards some 10 gigabit Ethernet configuration. Uh, but that's, that's for the future. For right now, we're focusing mainly on the storage array. To that end, uh, we have five Western Digital 4 terabyte uh, RE drives. And uh, let's start off by taking a closer look at the rest of this hardware. So the first item here is the LSI Mega Raid SAS 9271-8i Raid Controller Card. Now this is a fairly high-end Raid Controller Card. This uh, veers a bit more towards the enterprise level versus consumer level of parts, and we actually kind of have a mix of enterprise and consumer parts in this build, but we wanted to make sure that our Raid array was going to be performing uh, quickly, and we also wanted to make sure that uh, we had a discrete controller for that as opposed to uh, some of the options that are integrated into our Super Micro motherboard. So we do have four of these Western Digital 4 terabyte RE drives. These are the RAID edi edition drives from Western Digital. They're made specifically for RAID configurations and enterprise use. They're very fast, they're very reliable, and we have five of them. So we're going to go with a RAID 5 array that's going to give us 20 terabytes of raw storage, and since we're using RAID 5, we're going to have 16 terabytes of actual usable storage, and we'll be able to lose a single drive from the array, or if, if a single drive fails, we'll still be able to recover all the data and repair the array. Next up, we have uh, Cooler Master Sidon 120M liquid CPU cooler. Uh, since we're going with the Xeon uh, processor from Intel, the LJ2011 does not come with a, a CPU cooler in the box. So uh, we went with this Cooler Master unit because it's a closed loop liquid cooler. Should keep the processor nice and cool. It's actually a little bit of overkill for this processor, but it will match nicely with our Cooler Master case. And uh, aside from that, aside from the five hard drives that we've got, those mechanical drives, we've also got an SSD that we're going to be booting from. This is Intel's 335 series SSD, and it is the 240 gig version. And for the memory, we're using some ECC uh, server memory here. This is from Kingston, and this is uh, four four gig sticks clocked at 1600 megatransfers per second. And our power supply right here, whoops, our power supply is a 80 plus bronze Seasonic M12 II. And uh, we wanted a reliable power supply, so we went with a Seasonic. And we don't need that much power because this is a server build. We won't be putting a discrete graphics card in here or anything like that. So 620 watts should serve us just fine. Uh, as far as the motherboard goes, right over there to my left, um, I'm sorry, my right, your left, uh, is the X9 SRE. This is a super micro board. It is a server board, and it is socket 2011, of course. And uh, lastly, our chassis that we're going to be using today is the CM692 Advanced, and this is a Cooler Master build. So with that said, let's get this party started. And we're done. As you guys can see, our build came together quite nicely. And um, I've worked with a little bit of server parts here and there in the past, um, but this was really my first time actually assembling what I would call a server specifically from scratch. Um, and it was it was kind of the same but different a little bit in my experience. So Kyle, you're, you're kind of in the same boat, right? You haven't really built a server before. That's true. Was there any sort of eccentricities or strange things about the build that stuck out to you? Uh, yeah, actually, the motherboard is green which I'm not used to. Mm -hmm. And uh, aside from that, the motherboard did feel a little bit heavier than most gaming motherboards I'm used to, um, but I am just taking that as a sign of high build quality. 
Uh, as far as the memory goes, I'm not really used to installing memory without heat spreaders. So at first it felt really brittle and I thought I was going to break it, but it turned out to be just my paranoia because mm -hmm. the dims were just fine. Cool. Well, uh, yeah, a couple things that stuck out to me. I was a little bit concerned because, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, we're using mostly server components or server-grade components in here, but a, a few more gaming or consumer-grade components. The case was one thing I wasn't quite sure if it was going to match up. Uh, I was debating between going with a case like this and a server-specific case. But I really wanted something with like a painted interior. I really like the advanced cable management that's available. And as far as compatibility, we really only had one standoff that uh, did not line up in the top right corner. But there was another one right next to it. So we just, I was looking for a plastic spacer. I couldn't find one. We ended up just leaving it as is, and it's still just fine. There, there's plenty of support for it right there. Uh, but yeah, other than that, everything else came together quite nicely. We have some additional expansion options in the future. We still have all of our five and a quarter inch bays, which are completely unpopulated, so if we want to add drives in the future or something else like that, we have the space there. And then, of course, we also have some open spots down there in our PCI Express slots, so we might be dabbling in some uh, 10 gigabit Ethernet projects in the future as well. But we do have a second video coming up for this one that's going to be our uh, configuration and software side of this server build, so we will be following up with that once we go through all that and, and figure it all out, all out and get it up and running properly. Um, but we should probably turn the system on, I think. Sure. Maybe. Let's do Kyle. it. Kyle's going to do the honors. I will. All right. Now, you might notice uh, with server boards, they actually have speakers built into them. And sometimes they actually make noise, beep, boop, boop, beep. which is not quite as common uh, with gaming boards these days. Unless, unless you get the little speaker header and you can plug that in. and uh, something then. Oh. It is. There's some beeps. All right, we have a post, so I think we're good to go. Uh, but we did want to lastly end with a huge thank you to all of our sponsors. I'll start off by thanking Western Digital because they really got the ball moving on this project by providing us with our set of five WDRE four terabyte hard drives, which are just amazing, and I'm really looking forward. And we will be following up also with some speed tests on our RAID array once that is all configured. Yes, and uh, also wanted to thank Intel, Kingston, Supermicro, Cooler Master, and Seasonic as well. And LSI. And LSI, of course. They also provided the RAID card, which also we're really excited to see the performance of. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Once again, guys, if you'd like to see additional videos like this, you can check out our Newegg TV YouTube channel. And also stay tuned for our future follow-up second part of this video with the configuration and the software and some performance testing. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. This is Kyle, also with Newegg TV. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.